Okay, in this video we're going to work problem um, 223 from your textbook. It's another buoyancy problem. And in this case, I've got a tank with a square bottom, and the side of the bottom um, has a, a length of B equal to 2 feet. And what's happened is we put a cubicle block um, into that tank, and the block has a uh, bottom width has a square bottom, and it has a width of 1 foot. B equal to one foot. So when we put that block in, the water is displaced and lifted up. And we're trying to find out what is the water level H that the water rises to. We're told that initially the water level in the tank is three feet. So initially we're here at three. So after this block goes in, um, the water level comes up here a little bit. We're expecting a rise so that basically the volume that rises here is going to be similar to what's displaced. So um, what we're going to do is, is use a volume conservation principle, the idea that the volume here has to equal the volume there. That's one idea. The other idea we're going to use is Archimedes' principle that, that the weight of a displaced fluid um, equals the weight of an object when it's floating. So because we've got a floating object here. Okay, so what I've done is I've introduced a variable d here represent, representing the depth that this block is, is, uh, has sunk to. Um, and we're going to solve for that first. And once we know that depth, we can work out um, what the total depth h is going to be. So step one is to use Archimedes' principle, which says that the buoyant force on an object um, equals the weight of the object if it's floating. Okay, so in this case it's floating. So the buoyant force on the object will be equal to the weight of displaced fluid. So that's what the unit weight of water times the volume that's displaced, which is going to be equal to this volume here. Okay, that's the fluid that's displaced. So that's going to be equal to B squared times D. And then when we look at the weight of, of the block, it's going to be equal to the unit weight of the block, which we'll call gamma b, times the volume of the block, which is b to the third. So if we set these things together, we get gamma w b squared d is equal to gamma b times b to the third. So those guys cancel that. And we can conclude that um, the d, which is the depth that this block is going to float in will be equal to gamma b over gamma w times b. b is 1 feet, gamma b is 50 pounds per cubic feet, gamma water is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet, so this works out to be 0 0.80 feet. Okay, great. So now we know what D is, now what we want to do is figure out how um, high H is. And so the way we can do that is to recognize that the initial volume here is going to be the same as the volume here. So if we write initial volume equals final volume, this is part two, a little volume balance. So volume initial equals volume final. The initial volume of water is b squared times h0. So h0 is the initial depth here. And that's 3 feet. And if that's equal to the final volume, the final volume can be thought of either as this volume down here plus sort of what's on the sides of the block, or a slightly better way to think about it is volume of this entire cube up here minus the part where that has been displaced by the block. So the, the volume final can be thought of as b squared times um, h, not d, but h, okay, minus the volume that's been displaced, which is going to be equal to b squared times d. So since we want to solve for h, we can say that b squared h is equal to b squared h0 plus 
um, b squared d. And so h is going to be equal to b squared root 0 plus little b squared times e divided by big b squared. b is 2 feet, h0 is 3 feet, little b is 1 foot. So this works out to be 4 times 3 plus 0 0.8 over 4. I believe that works out to be 3.2 feet. Okay, so initially we're at 3 feet. By the time the block comes in, displaces some liquid, pushes it up, it comes up at an amount of 0.2 feet compared to what it was previously, so it works out to be 3.2 feet.